Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Kuldeep here. Today I am going to talk about test planning in software testing. Test planning is one of very important concept in software testing. Irrespective of your experience, you will definitely encounter few questions that are related with the test planning. So let's see like what kind of questions can be asked during an interview process. Then we will see how you can reply it. So first let's see what can be the questions related to test planning. The questions can come in following way like what is the test plan? What is the test plan template? What are the considerable factor for test estimation? Who is the author of test plan document? Who approves the test plan document? What is the risk and contingency in test planning? What is the entry and exit criteria in test plan? And have you ever created a test plan or participated in creation? Or have you ever seen the test plan? So, there can be a lot of questions related to test planning. Now, let's see like how you can answer these questions. I have created this test plan document and uh, we'll explain these content one by one. Okay. So, kindly stay with me. So, let's start. Okay. The very first thing is document revision history. It is very important to maintain the document revision history because it is quite possible that your test plan will not be ready in first version itself. So it is quite possible that you need to create multiple versions. So you need to maintain the document revision history so that you can easily come to know that what kind of changes you have done over the time in your document. Okay. I have given a format here. This is just a dummy data I have written. You can definitely uh, use the actual data while creating the test plan. The next point is acronyms. Actually, this plan needs to be approved by stakeholders and it is quite possible that they are in the different geography it becomes very essential that each and everyone is on the same page we should never use the acronyms in our planning but yes if we are going to use it then clearly mention the full form of your acronyms let's say like I have written the BRS. So it is not necessary that everyone will interpret as business requirement specification. So some people may have the different full form or a different meaning for this particular acronym. We need to clearly explain like what does this acronym mean so that there is no confusion while going through this document. Okay. So the next point is overview of project. In this section, we can give the overview of the project and we can write in this way like this is the test plan for the project name and a test plan describes the test strategy and approach that QA would follow to validate the quality of project. And it contains the various resources required for the successful completion of the project. This plan will be reviewed and approved by all stakeholders to assure the completeness of the testing. And if any major changes to the testing scope are made, then the test plan needs to be reviewed and approved. And the results review will become the final validation of test plan along with any other exit criteria. You can put that kind of things inside the overview of the project. Okay. Next is the objectives. 
so basically the test plan defines the scope approach resources schedule risk mitigation and entry and exit criteria so if someone asks you like what is the objective of test plan you can clearly mention these points as a part of this actually we will define the activities executed to prepare and conduct testing define the test strategy to be followed deliverables and the resources various dependencies and risk and define the test tools and the environment needed to conduct the test so as a part of test objectives we will cover these items okay next point is features to be tested once a project is planned for delivery so definitely as a part of that actually we will be delivering lot of features to our customers and uh, for tracking purpose we are using some project management tool and jira is one of them that's why i have referred here the jira key here product owner will be creating uh, user stories based on the discussion with the stakeholders they will basically convert the business requirement into the user stories so with the help of that jira dashboard actually we can maintain the list of the features which we will validating as a part of testing okay so we need to create a section features to be tested and as a part of that actually you can pick the jira keys from jira dashboard and uh, maintain the details in this way like jira key summary testing is scope and comments so here you can mention the jira key along with that summary so what feature you are going to test and what is the testing scope so let's say like i have a jira key jira underscore one and the summary of that feature is application login feature and as a part of that actually testing scope will be functional and ui testing okay so in the same way you can pick all the jiras which are part of your scope and you can maintain the details here which you are supposed to test okay and the next section is feature not to be tested so anything which is not in the scope of testing we can clearly mention that following items is not going to be tested during the testing process for example i have written the security and the performance testing will not be the part of this test plan okay let's move to the next section so next section is the test approach so let's see like what are the item that we need to cover in the test approach section so basically the test approach defines the scope and direction of the test effort so first is the test case management so as a part of it actually the test cases creation review approval and test execution will be managed by a test management tool that can be any tool like qmetry qtest zephyr qas test trial so all the test cases will be created reviewed approved then they will be executed inside that particular test management tool and qa task like the test cases creation test cases review and execution will be created for each user story in each sprint okay which means for each user story we will write the test case they will be reviewed and then it will be executed okay and the test cases will be written and reviewed before every sprint and the test execution would happen only after the test case review is completed which means test cases will not be executed unless it is reviewed by some senior team members okay next is the unit testing so unit testing will be done by the development team and the result will be shared for each sprint with stakeholders okay a smoke test so it will contain the detail of the testing which qa will perform as a part of a smoke test after that there comes the functional testing so features testing will be done for the user stories delivered in each sprint and the defects will be raised in case any discrepancies observed from the 
business requirement document okay and the next point is all salient priority test case of the features that has been verified in previous aspects will be included in acceptance test suit so that the codes of these feature gets test in each sprint when testing is going on okay and the next is the bug regression so fixed defects will be validated in each sprint and the regression testing will be done for the impacted areas okay db testing so db testing will be performed to ensure data mapping business rule and data integration so the next is the non functional testing so if it is applicable then following will be tested as a part of non functional testing so first is the ui testing ui testing will be done to check the gui of application and the purpose of testing is to ensure ui functionality works as per specification and we can check the screen validations navigations and usability conditions as a part of ui testing and the next is the documentation so if as a part of software you are releasing any kind of installation guide troubleshooting guides so that also needs to be validated as a part of your documentation testing okay and let's see like if you need to test your application on various devices then we need to maintain the details of the browser compatibility testing so we can provide the details of different browsers and the versions on which we are supposed to test the application along with that if we are supporting uh, devices then we need to provide the details of devices as well okay the next section is test entry criteria so basically the test entry criteria is to ensure that all the prerequisites are set up before proceeding for the testing so as a part of it actually we need to make sure that all the test cases are developed reviewed and ready for the execution test environment has been set up and all other necessary resources such as the tools and devices are available for the testing okay so this is known as the test entry criteria now let's talk about the test exit criteria so as a part of test exit criteria we need to make sure that the no test case fails in smoke or acceptance test all the test scope for release are executed there are no open severity s1 s2 or s3 defects and regression items and all deliverables like bugs and enhancement that are in the scope of this release has been completed and in case of any open issues or the exceptions they need to be the part of your release notes okay which needs to be uh, shared along with your software to the clients now let's move to the uh, suspension and resumption criteria so the criteria that will justify the test suspension or if build is delivered to qa and fail to install and after the build has been successfully installed basic functionality is not working any test fails in the smoke test or the product under test contains one or more critical defect which seriously prevents or limited testing progress so if any of these criteria are meeting then testing will be suspended and the resumptions will be only occur when the problems that are stated here that cause the suspension has been resolved so sometimes what happens let's say qa have received the build for testing but it is not working or failing due to any of these regions so in that case qa has all the rights to uh, reject the build okay and they can accept the builds only once these blocking point has been resolved okay now let's talk about roles responsibility or the task for the team members working on uh, this particular test plan okay so here is the guideline for the qa team lead okay so qa team lead will responsible for preparing the functional shoot in the test management tool and assign them to test members based on the existing or the newly added functionalities okay 
they will assign the acceptance test suit to team members and follow up the progress preparing the test environment review of the plan and process to ensure the process is followed precisely and a test plan owner to revisit the plan after each sprint and period to release to ensure that we have indeed compiled with it okay so this is the task guideline for the qa lead and now let's talk about the task guideline for the qa team members so qa team members will run the assigned functional test suite report the issues for the found defect verify the assigned defects in the defect management tool if they are passed and track the filed issues until it is closed or verified fixed these will be the task guideline for the qa team members okay resource so basically the resource tracking will be done by the project management tool like jira okay so i have not mentioned it here and we can maintain the details of the timelines so we can capture the details in this way like a spent build number qa delivery and working days and comments okay we can maintain the data in this way uh, like when we got the build what was the build number what was the qa delivery and uh, how many working days were there in particular sprints so it is just dummy data okay so you can use the real data on which project you are working on now let's talk about the test dependencies we can define the test dependencies in this way like a slip in the sprint delivery could result in day for day slip in the test phase there can be the hardware dependencies resource unavailability unplanned leaves or the unplanned task if any timely completion and delivery of milestone to qa and any changes in the requirement so basically if any of these things happens so it can cause a, a delay for sure now let's talk about the risk and contingency so basically this section identifies the high risk assumptions of the test plan and specifies the contingency plan for some of the assumptions there can be certain risk and uh, in case of risk happens so how we will try to mitigate those risk okay so let's say like uh, there is delay in deliverables to qa so in that case what we can do so here basically we can prioritize the test case to mitigate the risk on late defect identification as well as we can add the more bandwidth to mitigate the risk on delay in qa completion right resource unavailability in this case actually we can prioritize the testing task or utilize the team members from outside the qa team to mitigate the risk okay test environment unavailability so in this case actually can utilize the dev environment for the testing and in case like there are last minute large impact changes in the requirement to design and the features that could affect the test schedule in that case actually priorities will be set and the discussion will the stakeholders will happen to make sure that uh, we are able to meet the timelines and uh, in case uh, there are any risk then clearly we need to communicate with the stakeholders okay and last section is the approval so here actually we need to take the approval from the all stakeholders so that we all are aligned with this test plan okay and in case they have any concerns so they can clearly communicate to us okay but ultimately they should approve it okay so friends that's it for today's session i i hope it is helpful and i have covered all the important points that are required for the test planning okay so please let me know how you do the test planning in your organization thank you for watching my channel please like comment share and subscribe thank you so much